Welcome to the Treehouse Show podcast, your weekly dose of tech and all things Team Treehouse. All right. Well, starting off the second episode of the podcast, the Treehouse Show, you have your host, me, Dustin, and our co-host here, Laura. And today is going to basically be like the first episode where we got to know Laura, except she's going to quiz me with questions today. You guys are going to get to find out a lot about me. I might even learn a few things about me. Who knows? So, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do for Treehouse? And also, what do you do in your fun time when you're not coding? So for Treehouse, I am the developer advocate, also known as an evangelist, DevRel. I basically hang out with the community. I try to build up our community. I make cool videos on social media. I host a podcast. We live stream every week outside of coding. Well, that's kind of an interesting question because I code a lot. <laughs> I'm always yeah. coding. As soon as work's done, I, you know, I turn off my work computer, open up my personal one and get right back to it with my own stuff. But when I'm not coding, let's see, my biggest passion is fitness. I used to actually be severely overweight and I got very, very uh, addicted to just bettering myself and all things health and fitness. If I don't go to the gym in the morning, my day is really like off. It's just off. It's just part of my routine. Let's see. I am a really, really big uh, reader. I love reading. So that's one thing. What and genre? also fantasy. It's always fantasy. Okay. Anything like Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. I'm currently reading Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, which is you know all about Ooh. dragons. It's really, really yes, cool. Yes, that is on the rave right now. I haven't read that yet. Halfway through Fourth Wing and it's it's been such a good book. I've been very impressed. Have um, you heard of Brandon Sanderson yet? I have not. Who's that? Okay. He's a big fantasy person too. His books are like thousands of pages. So it's, oh, it's wow. a commitment, but it's pretty That's good. cool though. It's awesome. I didn't know most of that from you, <laughs> but that's because I was just like, oh, yeah, Dustin, what he do, does every day? Codes 24-7. Because every time I talk to you, you have a new project. You're oh, like, yeah. I just did this. I'm like, what? Wh- when? Where do you have the time? Always working on something. So you have a great job, which I'm pretty jealous. You basically just have fun, code, and teach people, and always continue learning. But was your background always in tech? Like, did you always like tech? Is that like when you were a kid, you knew computer or i don't even think computers were a thing when we were kids actually no no it wasn't i (laughs) I remember having one and my oldest brother was like super big into it care less that we had a computer in my living room i didn't know much about what it did other than there was this paint um app that i use i think it's literally microsoft paint the og (laughs) Um, but other than that i didn't care about tech i was always really really good with it i do remember wanting to have an iphone for the longest time and I, i you know i was it was before like I really had a cell phone. So my parents were like, no, we're not getting you an iPhone. And I mean, we were on like the iPhone 3G at the time. It was super, okay. super young. Right. Yeah. But I had this iPod that I still have. It's in my closet. Like it looks like the iPhone, right? It's that old iPod. The fat and chunky I, one. Yes. And I remember thinking, okay, I am going to figure out how to do what they call jailbreaking it, oh. which everyone knows what that is nowadays. But at the time yeah. it was like, oh, you know how to jailbreak? <laughs> um, I remember jailbreaking it and actually getting it to work. Uh, it was, it was very interesting. It was fun. But when I, when I did that, I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. But outside of that, no, I never, I was never really big into tech. I actually got into tech for the first time, like seriously, especially like career wise about five years ago. It's not long at all. And you're no. building so many crazy like applications with just five years of knowing how to go. That's pretty Yeah, amazing. I barely knew HTML and CSS before I started. I think the most I was involved with that before five years was maybe updating my little profile on MySpace when I was younger. <laughs> that was about yes. it. Yes. And then picking, you have to pick the perfect like profile song. Oh, yeah. I, actually, I saw a tweet on X saying, I think a Gen Z or whatever the latest gen people are saying that can we have theme songs for our profiles and can we be able to customize it? And I'm just like, girl, that's my space. Top five friends. (laughs) drama. The anxiety of that. So you learned only five years ago. So how did you learn coding? And then once you learned it, what was your first developer role? So I learned through Treehouse actually where I work. Okay. Um, I, was working in the oil field. I had just moved to Texas from Louisiana. Um, I ended up getting hurt on the job and could not could not continue working. I was actually let go on disability. 
and it sucked. I didn't have Oof. any other experience other than welding and driving trucks. And I just, I knew it was time. Like this was like my moment. Like if I'm going to get out of like the hard labor aspect of work, I, I needed to do something. And COVID was like just starting. So I was, I was kind of scared. Um, and then I decided to look into coding because I thought it was kind of cool. I always really liked tech, but I never really did anything with it. And I found Treehouse. I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, oof, $200 for a tech degree per month. It looks like everyone else on this platform is having lots of success, but it was just, I'm not working anymore. Two months is now very expensive to me. Yeah. And I remember having a little bit of money set aside and I was like, you know what? I haven't taken a vacation in like four or five years. And I was like, I'm going to take a vacation. I remember going on a cruise and just thinking over and over, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I admittedly probably should have not wasted my money on a cruise, but I needed to clear my head. I needed to get in the right headspace. Okay. And I just kept thinking treehouse, 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 treehouse. I wonder if I really gave it my all because I'm a very addictive person. I will give either 100% or 0%. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if I gave coding a hundred percent and really invested in this, can I change my life? And I did a little, little research, a little bit of digging and it, all the success I've seen from other people that have tried the platform, it, it really enticed me. So I got back from my cruise. I gave it a try and long story short, I fell in love with it. I learned very, very quickly. I mean, I, like I said, I have an addictive personality. So when I learn something, I, I go full speed into it Nice and I want to say within six months, six or seven months, I finished the front end web development tech degree. I also learned that not only did I like coding, I really liked helping and teaching. So as part of the Treehouse tech degree, you get access to the exclusive Slack community, which is full of other developers learning to on the Treehouse platform. And I decided to stick around even after I graduated and just help people, help people learn, help people understand some of the concepts that they were going through, kind of share my experiences. And I was offered a part-time position to be like a Slack moderator at that point. And I just did that. I focused on helping and just learning and continuing to grow as a developer until I landed my first job, which was about, I want to say like four or five months after I graduated, I landed um, a hybrid position uh, out in North Texas, which is where I was living at the time. And it was a very entry level um, HTML, CSS, some JavaScript role. I was so prepared for that job with my skill set that I got from Treehouse that it wasn't as scary as a lot of people make their first role out to be. That's awesome to hear because like, I know for me, that was the scariest thing, like getting your first job after doing a tech degree or just like doing the whole career change, because I'm sure everyone knows uh, imposter syndrome is a thing. And oh, it's, it's bad. It stays with you for too long. I don't <laughs> think anyone ever gets over it. Oh, no. I'll have imposter syndrome to the day I die, even on just HTML stuff. There's always somebody <laughs> out there that just seems like they just know it all and they're so much better. And you'll always, you know, we always say don't compare yourself, but you'll always just a little bit. You'll compare yourself to everyone. Oh, yeah. So. It's, I don't think you can ever not compare yourself because, I don't know, we're human. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Right. But... You have, I feel like, so much different experience with Treehouse than I do. Because, like, okay, so you, you're a student. Then you were helping out people in Slack. You became a moderator. And now you're working for Treehouse. So, like, take away working for Treehouse. What are your thoughts of Treehouse as a consumer? Like, just using the platform, being a student there. So, the platform itself is very unique. And, obviously, we, we work for Treehouse. But I'm not trying to be biased. Um, I'm going to be pretty blunt. Treehouse is great. It has its pros and it has its cons, just like everything else. The things that I like the most about Treehouse, especially the tech degree aspect of it, is the community. Nowadays, yeah. as saturated as the job market is, you know, one of the easiest ways to get your foot in the door somewhere is networking. And I, I want to say Treehouse is one of the only places that's just nailed the networking aspect of it, but it is up to you to kind of utilize it. With the tech degree, you get access to the exclusive Slack channels, like I mentioned for your respective tech degree. So for the front end tech degree, there's a Slack space dedicated for it. And it's full of every other developer on the platform that's also learning. So they're going through the same things you're going through. So it just makes sense. Like be friendly, tell everyone good morning. If you got an issue, no matter how small, just ask. There's someone there that's going to answer it. And you might just find friends in there, people that are you know just like you. I mean, I met my best friend who to this day, we, are, we still keep up every single day through Treehouse's tech degree program inside Slack. He was just working his way through. I saw that one day he decided to 
take a break. I was like, I noticed you just got to the JavaScript section. It's getting a little tough, you know, but hey, if you got any questions, you know, I'm here. And he said, I'm not going to lie. It was getting a little tough. So I was scared to ask, you know, and I'm glad you reached out and, you know, I helped him through it. And now he's, he's a professional front end engineer at a company in North Texas where I was. There's a few ways to learn on Treehouse, if you don't know. And the main one's the tech degree program. What's cool about the tech degree is it tells you, hey, if you want to learn front end web development, take the front end web development tech degree. And it's broken down into sections. The guesswork's gone. You don't have to figure out, okay, how much HTML, CSS, and JavaScript do I need to know? That's like something I also really like because like if you're someone who needs structure, you have the tech degree. If you're someone who just likes to learn things here and there, you don't need to subscribe as a tech degree. You can just do courses plan. I don't know if I asked you or if you said this. How did you find Treehouse? Like, because there's so many options out there. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I just... I want to say I just Googled, like, how do I code? And obviously, Treehouse showed up, but not just Treehouse. Like, so many other places showed up. And mm -hmm. it wasn't just I was deciding whether or not to do Treehouse or not. It was me deciding, am I going to do Treehouse? Am I going to use uh, Udemy, which I think was uh, big at the time, still is. And then, obviously, all the, the free stuff on YouTube. I mean, yeah. super enticing. I don't have money coming in anymore. Why would I choose to pay? Exactly. And I like everyone else, I didn't just jump straight into Treehouse. Like everyone else, I yeah, I tried some free stuff. And like I said, I learned very quickly that while these are pretty helpful on their own, you know, you're left with the big, what do I do next? Or how do I apply what I just learned and put this into a website? You know, I know how to do this thing, but how do I mm -hmm. take this thing and use other things with it? And like, that's why I will always advocate for Treehouse. The structure is just, it's perfect. All right. So before we end today's show, We'll start with the fun question. I have three questions before what I you let you go. All right. First one, nice and fun and easy. What do you use as a rubber duck? And what is a rubber duck for those who don't know it? <laughs> okay. Rubber duck. So have you ever had a problem in your code? You go to ask somebody and while you ask them, you just kind of figure out the answer. That's basically the rubber duck. Uh, I don't know if you call it an approach or, or whatever you call it, but that's basically what <laughs> that is. So you're talking out loud. You're explaining your problem. And you're not just typing it or saying it. Your your brain is still thinking, you know, as you as you type it and, and say it. So a lot of people have an actual rubber duck on their desk or something that they talk to, and they try to figure out their their um, their problem from that. Um, I've always kind of had like a, an imaginary one, and I'll just like sit sit down and just think. But mm -hmm. um, I do have one now. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you ready? Yes. It's Har Harry Potter. Does he have the thing where you have to say a magic word and then all the map appears? Is it like I'm up to no good? I'm a horrible Harry Potter fan. <laughs> so I actually do have a couple of rubber ducks. Hold on. This is the OG. This is the OG rubber duck. My camera oh, will focus oh, on him. Oh, it's a little catfish. Does it sit like mm -hmm. on top of your monitor or something? It sits everywhere. I move him once a week. I put him in a new spot every week. And That's uh, awesome. yeah, I, just, I just sit down and I watch him. He's so tiny. I'm He's surprised so my camera focuses on him. Well, his name's Henry. Oh, he has Henry. Yeah, I named him Henry. I don't even know a Henry. I thought your rubber duck was going to be Link, to be honest. I was just like, oh, wait, what answer is Link? Link? Hold on. The OG rubber duck. That he was one, the real kitty. Oh, he's so tired. You just woke him up, mm. didn't you? He deserves Aww. his own spot on the podcast, though. Yeah. Well, you got to hide those feet. No feet pics. No toby. No, no free feet. I always feel bad because my rubber ducks originally were people. And I'm just like, in the middle of my question, I'm like, never mind, I solved it. And I'll walk away and I always feel bad because I, I basically wasted 20 seconds of their life and I'm just like, explain my oh, problem. Yeah. Next question. What editor do you use and what theme? Ooh, I I am always changing my theme, but I do I do have one fallback that I always go to. So I use VS Code. Okay. Um, I, I really love it. I have used, my very first editor was Brackets. I don't know if anyone knows what Brackets are. And then I went to Sublime. I'm sorry, no, then I went to Adam for like a day. I, I hated Adam. As for my themes, so everyone knows the default dark theme that comes with VS Code, right? Mm -hmm. It's just too default for me, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's just yeah. too... De so I have a few versions of it. Um, let's see what if I could find it, what it's called. Yeah, so it's just dark, low, contrast, cold. Slightly blue hue to the uh, original OG, just dark editor. Your themes mostly just change color. You don't change like the font um, or I, anything. I do have a very, I have a custom font that GitHub put out actually. And it's very, 
Very nice. Let me open up my settings and see what it's called. And you can download this from um, GitHub, actually. It's called Monospace Neon VAR. It's Ooh. very it's very nice. And it can come with ligatures if you like that sort of thing, or you can turn them off. I, I like ligatures. I put them on. Yeah, definitely. And also, if you missed last week's podcast, um, check it out. But Laura mentioned um, power mode, and I've been addicted. I have it turned on, oh, and I'm never- Oh, you've been using it? Never turning it off. I did have to set up the settings a little bit because it was it was clunky in yeah. the beginning. It it shook my screen. I didn't like that. And then it had yeah, like I the, don't the like the counter shaking at the top. Just... Yeah. No, so I set it to like I think fireworks and just no shaking, no uh, counter at the top, and it's it's amazing. It's so it's, it's cool. Fun. It's just a touch of oomph that I need while I code. Yeah, it's a little pizzazz. It brightens up your day. Last question to end this off: If you can go back in time and tell young. Dustin, anything. What would it be? Stop writing jQuery. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All the projects that I built that were so amazing and so awesome that I still wish I had access to. Uh, we're all written in jQuery because I refused to learn JavaScript because <laughs> jQuery was just so much easier. jQuery, yeah, everything was written in it. And I got to a point where it was breaking a lot of stuff, which is why a lot of people don't <sighs> like jQuery. So I got rid of it and I got super embarrassed that I wrote so much in it that I deleted all my old projects that were written in jQuery. No. Yeah. So my, my, uh, my GitHub's pretty small. It's pretty small now, but yeah, I would tell young Dustin, learn JavaScript, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop worrying about the cool jQuery animations and learn some JavaScript a little bit sooner. But they make it like nice and fast is what I heard. It's like a quick way to learn. Yeah, nice. they do. But, uh, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that. Another thing, just generally speaking, that I would tell younger Dustin in the same sense, like. It's not just don't learn jQuery, go learn JavaScript, but just don't fixate yourself on one concept. Regardless if it works well or not, like jQuery is a bad example because jQuery sucks. But if let's say it was just <laughs> JavaScript, like don't fixate yourself on one thing because you'll get comfortable in it and you won't learn. You'll still get your your problems fixed and you'll still build things, but your knowledge is just going to be so closed. This is going to be closed off. You know, learn new things. Don't be afraid to learn new things. Like I learned, I learned two new uh, database services last weekend. And I'm so thankful I did because the old ones that I use seem so outdated now and I can get more work done quicker. Shout out to Superbase and Firebase. But yeah, don't get fixated on one thing. That's what I would tell them. I guess like that's one bad side about your uh, super addictive personality. Just like yes. you f get fixated on one thing, but now you're just like, don't. But it yeah, worked out. I, yeah, I will I will fixate so hard on one thing and I will I will master it before I move on. It's a blessing and a curse for sure. Do you play your video games like that? Yes. Or do you not play video games? Okay. <laughs> oh, I am a huge gamer outside of... See, that's another hobby of mine. I am a huge gamer. I haven't had much time yeah. to game uh, in the last year or so, but whenever I, I am not learning or I'm not in one of my my learning seasons, I am, I'm an avid mm -hmm. gamer. I love gaming. But yes, very, very addictive personality with games as well. Yeah. I transitioned my husband into the dark side because I am the type of person who's like, oh, the game wants me to go left. I am going right. <laughs> There is a treasure to the right somewhere. I am not listening to the game. You're just so, defiant. <laughs> yes. Which some may say I might be playing how the developers want to play. Because if they didn't put a treasure chest over there, then why, or like, why are they putting stuff there? This they is want true. me to go there. Yeah. I'll be playing like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom on my Switch. Uh, both Zelda <laughs> games, for those that don't know. And if there's a clear path to where I need to go, but I see a small cutoff, you best believe I'm going down that cutoff. Now, there yep. might be a fight down there I got to figure out, or there's ten, nine times out of ten, there's a chest down there I'm going to get some some good loot out of. So, yeah, no, I feel that. Exactly. But as far as my addictive personality, there's been one game that's followed me my whole life. I'm not ashamed to admit I've played it for 16 years, and I still play it. Uh, it's the nerdiest game out there. It's called RuneScape for those that do know or don't know about it. That but sounds very familiar. It's a medieval game. Uh, it's very repetition based. It's just the game I grew up with and I just refuse to let it go. It's my it's my escape when I need it and I but still play it actively. I've never played RuneScape to be honest, but I see some comparisons <laughs> of like old, it look all boxy, kind of like boxy animations. Yeah, there's two versions. Like the there's, a, there's a modern version of RuneScape that a lot of people kind of hate on because the OG game is just nice. 
but the OG mm-hmm. game has like horrible graphics, but it's what everyone knows and loves. So everyone plays that over the new modern, cool looking version of it. But I yeah, play because I see more so. photos of the original than I do yeah. of the new one. Oh yeah, yeah. So they actually called it old school RuneScape. So you can play nice. old school RuneScape, or you can play what's called RuneScape Three, which is just the more modern version. And I do play both. I- I'm so I'm so back and forth. But I do play both. So anyone listening that plays some RuneScape <laughs> wants to play with me, come hang out in our Discord channel. Come find out what my username is, and let's let's play some let's play some RuneScape. Let's go boss hunting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I've learned quite a lot about you. To be honest, like we've worked together for a couple of years now, but I didn't really know your background. Like I was just like. So yeah, this is Dustin. Dustin does some cool stuff, but I learned quite a lot, and I'm glad we I know, did this. Uh, I know our last episode, I was like, okay, cool. So I'll learn a little bit about Laura, and it won't be too crazy. But no, it was. I learned so much about you. So I actually kind of want to do this with everyone on the team, see what we can learn about people. We should get our <laughs> yeah, CEO that, in there. Yeah, that actually is on the agenda. So you guys will get to hear me quiz our CEO here pretty soon, a few episodes to come. Oh, that's exciting. I'm going to tune in. Oh, yeah. So that wraps up the Treehouse Show podcast for today, and we hope you enjoyed the episode. What would you like to hear us talk about next? Be sure to join our community Discord server and let us know. Worth noting, if you want to give us a shot and learn a code, we've taught over 1.2 million developers and counting. You can set yourself up with a seven-day free training trial just by heading on over to teamtreehouse.com. Until next time, have fun and happy coding.